with several teams deploying single chainring setups during this year's Spring Classics and Primoz Roglic and Jonas Vingegaard using one at various times to win both the Giro and the Tour, one by drivetrains for road bikes are back in vogue. Now, while one by setups do have certain advantages in certain scenarios, which we will discuss in a moment, a one by revolution on road bikes still feels a long way off to me. And in my opinion, front derailers are just too good these days. And for the most part, what you gain from ditching them doesn't outweigh the drawbacks. But do you agree with me? Well, once you've heard my take, I want to know your thoughts. And I'm sure you'll let me know why I'm wrong down in the comments below. I'll be the first to admit that there are places where one by does make some sense for road bikes, so let's take a little look at those. In scenarios where a wide range of gears isn't needed, such as during relatively flat rides or races, then a one by drivetrain can provide all the gears you need in a simpler package, and we often see this in time trials and races such as Paris-Roubaix for example. One by drivetrains can also be more aero. According to UK-based experts AeroCoach, switching to its Arc one by aero chain rings can save between 1 to 4 watts at 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour, depending on the size of the front derailleur you're removing. Now that's a marginal gain, but it is one that's being increasingly exploited on time trial bikes both in the pro peloton and amongst amateur testers. Using a chain guard, which helps prevent the chain from dropping off the chain ring, naturally compromises any aero gain somewhat. However, such setups can provide greater chain security compared to a 2x setup, which can be critical in cobbled races such as Paris-Roubaix. Perhaps for these reasons, Wout van Aert used a 1x SRAM Red ETAP Axis drivetrain at both Milan San Remo and Paris-Roubaix this year. But it's not just in fast, flat situations that 1x drivetrains are seen. Now, depending on the setup, 1x can also be lighter as you can ditch one chain ring plus the front derailleur. And it's for this reason that dedicated hill climb bikes almost always use one by drivetrains. And if you're interested in hill climb tech, why not check out Hill Climb Diaries, our series covering the UK's incredible hill climb racing scene and the featherweight custom bikes used to ride up hills as fast as possible. It's clear then that there are some advantages to one by drivetrains on the road in certain scenarios. There are, however, some notable disadvantages too. Most obviously, ditching your front derailleur and one of your chain rings means significantly reducing the number and range of gears on your bike. Now, it is possible to compensate for this by using a wider range cassette outback and carefully matching your chain ring size the demands of each ride. However, getting close to the range of a 2 by setup comes with compromises. Firstly, wide range cassettes, which are required if you want to maintain a similar gearing range to a 2x system, are usually heavier than tighter ones, negating any theoretical weight advantage. A bigger issue for me though is that they typically come with much larger jumps between the gears and use smaller cogs at the bottom end to help you gain that extra range of a smaller front chainring. This can be annoying because the gradient changes on the road are typically more gradual than off-road, and large gaps between the gear ratios can leave you searching for an optimum cadence in certain scenarios. Smaller cogs, such as the 9 or 10-tooth versions seen on Campagnolo Eckhart and SRAM Axis cassettes, and the smaller chain rings are also marginally less efficient than larger ones because the chain runs at tighter angles than on larger cogs and chain rings. Though SRAM and Shimano wouldn't argue that this is cross-chaining in the truest sense of the word, one by drivetrains also force the chain into more extreme angles at the ends of the cassette compared to two by drivetrains. And both of these factors can lead to increased frictional losses within the drivetrain, which in turn means that slightly less of your effort reaches the tires with a one by drivetrain compared to a two by drivetrain. In terms of how much less, well, testing by Ceramic Speed on behalf of Velo News showed that a 2x11 speed Shimano drivetrain was around 3 watts more efficient on average than a SRAM Force 1x drivetrain. The differences widen when using the smallest cogs on each cassette too. A 5311 gear was shown to be around 6 watts more efficient than a 4810, for example. Of course, if you aren't keeping your drivetrain perfectly clean, then efficiency losses from optimizing chainring and sprocket sizes are arguably a moot point. The crux of the matter, however, is that it's easy to see how frictional losses can quickly cancel out any potential error gain if you size down your chainrings and cassette cogs when switching to one by.
regardless of the specific advantages and disadvantages mentioned earlier, the major reason that I won't be switching to one by drivetrains on my road bikes anytime soon is this. Front derailleurs are generally speaking just really good nowadays. Modern group sets at almost every level offer such excellent front shifting performance that choosing to forego a front derailleur feels like cutting off your nose to spite your face. Now, the gold standard for front shifting is without doubt currently found on electronic group sets. Many, myself included, consider Shimano to be the market leader in this area, but SRAM and Campagnolo don't lag far behind. However, even mechanical group sets manage front shifting fantastically well these days. I recently tested the new Trek Imonda ALR5, for example, which uses a Shimano 105R7000 drivetrain, and the front shifting was practically flawless. Of course, a poorly timed shift or bad setup can still cause issues, but on the whole, front shifting just doesn't feel like a problem that needs solving anymore. Now, my lovely Giant TCR, for example, is currently set up with a Shimano Dura Ace Di2 group set with 12 speed 11 to 34 tooth cassette out back and a non standard 53 36 11 speed chainring combination up front. And despite falling well outside Shimano's recommendations, it actually shifts brilliantly. I get a lovely big chainring for fast riding and an easiest gear ratio small enough to spin my way up nearly any climb, and the gear ratios are pretty tight too. I've even tried a 53-34 tooth setup before and found that it works fine too. It isn't as reliable as when set up as Shimano intends and the jump between the two rings can be pretty jarring, but it is perfectly usable when you need a tiny climbing gear for short periods and you don't want to reset your derailleur height and cable tension. Often touted as a front derailleur killer, Classified's power shift hub gear system is a wirelessly controlled two-speed planetary gear system integrated into a rear hub. While our full review of the system is still in the works, it's fair to say that our initial impressions have been very positive. It does appear to offer solutions to many of the disadvantages of one by mentioned previously, so maybe we can have our cake and eat it after all. The issue for me though is that it's just far too expensive as things stand. Classifieds R50 and G30 power shift wheel sets, for example, cost £2,300, just £25 less than the entire Trek Emonda ALR5 mentioned previously. And what do you actually gain for all that cash compared to just sticking with a 2 by drivetrain? A marginal improvement to aerodynamic efficiency and is that's about it. Of course, the cost of Classified's hub tech will likely come down over time if it proves popular, but considering a 105 crank set and front derailleur have an RRP of 160 and 45 pounds respectively, and can usually be found online for far less, I don't think that price parity is on the horizon anytime soon. Thanks one buy, but no thanks. I won't deny that I have toyed with the idea of running one by drivetrains on some of my road bikes. My Planet X time trial bike and old 2009 Giant TCR Advanced SL are potentially ideal candidates for one by conversions. The TCR, for example, could be granted a new lease of life as a dedicated hill climb bike since I've got a newer disc brake version. On my less specialised road bikes though, two by is where it's at. With the kind of performance and versatility offered by modern front derailleurs, the small potential improvements offered by one by drivetrains just don't seem worth it. Even for someone as sad as me who waxes chains, wears aero base layers and generally obsesses over the tiniest gains. Instead, one by for road bikes still seems like a solution in search of a problem. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're someone who also shares my love of tiny gains, then why not help us keep the YouTube algorithm happy by watching this video after you've liked and subscribed.